So what I want to do now is dive into how to multiply your webinar conversions with a Messenger bot. All right, so what is this applicable to what I'm about to go through? This is applicable to live webinars, evergreen webinars, video series funnels, if you've got many videos that you break down, um, documentary or film funnels as well, because I know that is a big thing, especially in the health and wellness spaces. There are a lot of documentary style funnels where people sign up and they get access to certain pieces or full documentaries during a certain launch period. So that's what I'm referring to when I say that. Ultimately, anything that has an event that's virtual that people are going to have to register. And everything I'm sharing comes from sending over 10 million messenger bot messages and 4 million of those are webinar related. It's actually probably a lot more at this point, um, but just to give you guys an idea of all the data that we've accumulated and how we've applied that to what I'm about to share with you guys. So there are four phases. There is one phase in the middle here that I'll talk about towards the end. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to talk about it, which is why I didn't include it fully in the presentation, but obviously happy to talk about the strategies and tactics that we use during the webinar and during the replay when someone's actually on a web page watching. But I'm going to start with, of course, the webinar invite. We're going to go into the registration, reminders, and then sales. So for this webinar invite, I'm going to talk about inviting people into Messenger and having them register for the webinar within. Now, I do want to mention one thing, just to put this in context, is that I'm sure some of you guys who are already running great webinars are thinking, probably not all of the people who want to register for my webinar have a Messenger or Facebook account, which is definitely going to be true in the case. So I don't want to ignore that fact, and I want you guys to know that this is an amazing way to capture people and give them a great, delightful experience that converts higher than pretty much any other way you could do this. But at the same time, understand that it's probably still going to be necessary for you to have a landing page that leads into your webinar invitation and registration just to account for those people. So it's usually great to have that on your website if you are leading people to the webinar or, of course, if you also want to run ads to it. And then have people opt into Messenger along the way after they register it can be an option or SMS as well, which we can talk. So there are over seven different ways to opt people into your chatbot, and I want to talk about those ways so that you guys can get an idea where you're going to pull all your traffic from, and then now they're all going to be on the same path, which I'm going to walk you guys through. So the first one would be a messenger button. Now this is a button that Messenger actually gives you. There's not a whole lot of flexibility you have with the design, but you can change what the button says. That's one example. We've got a checkbox as well, and this one is I think the concept of it is great in practice. It doesn't convert as well as the other opt-ins I'm going to share with you guys, but it still is an option where you can add it as an additional opt-in if someone's already filling out a form on your website. So for example, someone fills out their email, also clicks that button, and now they are both opted into your email list and Messenger when they click. The chat widget. This is one that we get the highest number of conversions on, and I would imagine just without thinking about any data, um, from actual results that as consumers, we've been conditioned over the last few years to see chat widgets and talk to them, even if they're not actually chatbots, right? If they are actual humans that are on the other end and maybe it says, JK, no one's here to talk to you, sorry. Um, you know, and then that's a little bit disappointing as a user, but they exist there and you talk to them and so we're conditioned and that's why usually we get the highest opt-in rates here. And this example comes from a webinar thank you page, which I mentioned is another way that you can get people in, um, even if they haven't originally registered with uh, Messenger. Now another one is an opt-in with page post comments. So some of you guys may have seen this, um, and there's a lot of really creative, fun ways that you can implement this um, and you know let people know, hey, I'm going to be sending you a private message. But you'll see here, this is only now available to admins to see, but it says page responded privately, and that's how you can know that somebody has received a message from your chatbot after they commented. We've also got click to messenger Facebook ads. So just like a regular Facebook ad, um, there's not a whole lot that looks very different from this apart from the fact that this call to action leads to messenger. And of course you can change some of this text here, but ultimately the main important thing to know is that now it's going to trigger a message to your users. There's also something called a ref URL. So just like someone can go to facebook.com forward slash, let's say, SME examiner for social media examiner, someone can also go to Messenger and type in that same page username that you've got. And also, we can add a little something at the end of it, which you can do with something like ManyChat. And now you can lead people to a specific message inside of Messenger. So that's what this refers to. And you can also now turn this into two more opt-ins, QR code and a web button. So that's going to be it, opt-ins. 
Good to go. Does that all make sense so far, guys? Okay, great. If you've seen some of those, fantastic. Um, and hopefully that gave you some ideas if you saw those examples. And if you've never seen those before, hopefully your mind is starting to expand as to where you could implement this inside of your funnels. So jumping into the webinar invite then. I've got a few examples here on the right-hand side. Um, if that text is a little bit too small, I'll give you guys the slides at the end. Um, so I apologize in advance. I'll have some examples inside of a phone just to kind of keep it aesthetically fun. But I know that sometimes the text is a little bit small, so um, I will definitely share that with you guys after. Now, when you introduce a user to the webinar, keep in mind that this is a conversation, right? So ultimately, the best place you can pull some of this information would be your landing page if you've already got a converting webinar, which is what you should use my strategy and tactics I'm going to share with you guys for. But chatbot's not going to fix your broken webinar. Um, but it's important to know that you want to give that information step by step, which seems obvious to some of us since we do chatbots already. But for those of us who are just starting, copywriting is one of the hardest things sometimes for people in conversation because they think of it as a one-sided conversation, not so much considering what the user is going to say, how they're going to be involved, and what that back and forth is going to look like, even though we do it all day every day. So if you just took a moment to think about it and test it, that could happen. But people get lazy, understand, sometimes a little bit overwhelming. So what you want to do is take copy from your landing page or anywhere that you can pull this, even if it's from your own brain and you know about the webinar, and break it down into steps. And the most important things are to talk about what the user will be able to do after the webinar, what the webinar is about, when the webinar is, who's teaching. Fairly obvious things if you are already running webinars, so I'm not going to dive into that. But just to give you an idea, those are the main things which I bring up so that also you can give people bite-sized pieces of information. So in this example I share here, it says, would you like more information about the webinar? Or do you want to just jump straight into registering, right? So if someone's ready to register there, we're going to let them. But if they want a little bit more information, now we're going to dive into the next bullet that I have here. And then we're going to ask again, you good or do you want a little bit more? And then we're going to give them a little bit more. So that way you can really adjust for every single person who's in your funnel who wants to know more or is just ready, they're fired up, they just want to go with it. And so that's an example um, using ManyChat of what something like this might it looks a little bit crazy, and this is definitely not the craziest it can be. Um, I know that Mike Yan, the founder of ManyChat and CEO, also shared some pictures of flows and stuff, and I'm sure he mentioned that it can get super crazy. It can also be very simple, right? Sometimes the simplest stuff works the best. But just to give you guys an idea here, you can see how there's a general left to right, and then below each one, there's a follow-up, which you may not be able to see from where you guys are, are but I'm going to talk about what that looks like and how powerful that can be. So now we're going to move into the webinar registration. So this is going to be step two of your funnel here. And what you want to do is set expectations at the very beginning. As soon as someone comes into the invite, now it's time to register them, but with expectations. I think the worst thing you can do in a chatbot is continue to ask people questions. And they're like, when is this going to end? When am I going to finish um, answering these and get to the registration? Like, when's it all going to be over? So you don't want to create that feeling ever in your experience. Because once you do that, then that feeling could continue to come back and they might have some doubts about you know, what they're going to get out of the experience. So what you want to do here is tell them how many steps does it take to register. And you can do this very easily by saying step one of two, step two of three, you know, et cetera. So just something as easy as that. Now something I mentioned earlier is you want to add a follow-up check and message to every single step of the registration. This is the biggest advantage to using a chatbot in any scenario. So let's step away from webinars for a second, right? You've got lead generation, you've got maybe a customer support situation, um, there could literally be any time you're asking someone for information, you should have a follow-up so that you can make sure that they get to the end of whatever that conversation needed to be. Whether you help them or they say, never mind, I don't need help anymore. Right? Now, I also want to point out that gathering other contact methods is super valuable inside of Messenger, even more so now than ever. So you don't own your Messenger list, which is important for you guys to understand, right? Facebook Messenger owns that app, and you don't own Facebook Messenger. So you don't own your Messenger list, but you do own your email and SMS list. And the easiest way to understand that is you could easily download your email list, download your SMS, upload it to any platform that you want because you have that information. But Messenger relies on a unique ID for the app and for Facebook. So just know that and understand that. Um, also, additionally to that, it's going to be helpful to have other contact methods in case anything were to ever happen to Messenger or your Facebook page, and also with policies changing, and also asking people what their preference is. People might want email for whatever reason over um, a chatbot for certain things, or they might want SMS. Um, so allowing them to have those options also is going to be important. 
Sometimes you might even just need it. Let's say you're using some platform like Webinar Jam to run your webinars, then you actually are going to need some point of contact information to create a registration. So whatever that is, just make sure that it's clear to the user that it's going to be something beneficial for them. They understand why they're giving their information. Now for email, I want to talk about what the stats look like here. So when we capture email, we typically capture up to 90% of users' emails in the first ask. And then we follow up to capture the remaining users, so that's where that follow-up becomes really powerful and helpful. Now a percentage of these people just aren't going to be interested the same way someone might come to your webinar landing page and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, everyone's so excited, we're getting so much traffic, and then a small percentage of those people register. Obviously not everyone who comes there is going to be interested. And in a conversation, it's so much more important than a landing page to give people the option to say, I'm not interested anymore. Um, and then that actually gives you an opportunity to help them better. You can now segment them. You can now maybe send them to another webinar if you've got multiple or another offer, another freebie. So just keep that in mind. There is never a negative to letting people stop doing something in the bot in order to allow them to do something that's going to be more valuable for them and therefore bring more value to you. Also with phone numbers, same idea here. Um, we typically capture up to 80% of user phone numbers in the first ask, and then we follow up again to capture the remaining numbers. Now why capture email? Most of the time we actually have to get an email to register them in a webinar platform. Um, so we'll usually use that as a user-facing reason. And then for the phone number, again, giving people a reason, right? You don't want to be asking all this information. Um, I went through a chat bot one time from a pretty big influencer, and they asked like 20 questions in a row. They're like, what's your home address? What's your birthday? What's your email? And it's like, why am I wasting my time with this, right? You're like, what's, what am I going to get out of this at the end? And that's why setting expectations is so important. And that's why also um, we want to mention here why someone is going to want to give their phone number to us. And so in this case, typically it's going to be webinar reminders and or a post webinar. Of course, if you have something else that you want to test here that you think will be better, then definitely do that. But just to give you guys um, a few ideas. Now for our more advanced chat marketers, if someone doesn't want to give their phone number, again, here's another opportunity. Every time someone says no, that opens up a new door for you to bring them value in a different way. So there's something called the one-time notification that Messenger released in February. And this essentially gives you a token, it's the easiest way to understand this, to be able to message that person in the future, but it has to be about the same topic. So you can't say, hey, I'm going to send you a pre-webinar reminder, and then you message them about your Black Friday sale or something. So it does need to be relevant, um, and you need to keep your promise, essentially, right? So that's what something like that would look like, where it'll say, get notified, that's actually required by Facebook to be there, and then notify me will be that button right there. Also, something else you can do to have yet another contact method, which some people might not look at as a contact method, but it is a way to reach people outside of Messenger policies, is the mobile wallet. So you can use push notifications from a user's mobile wallet on Android or iPhone to send them anything that you want in regards to pre-webinar reminders or post-webinar sales messages. So here's an example of what that looks like. Um, inside of the mobile wallet, and then right below that is an example of what that notification might look like. Um, and you can usually pretty much customize that. There's a lot of different platforms that do this. One that's in the chatbot space that is great and run by a good friend of mine is Walletly.ai. So I'd recommend you guys check that out um, if you want to do this specifically in chatbots. But you can also implement it in other places. And that's an example of what a flow looks like in a webinar registration. So step three is going to be the webinar reminders. One of the most important things I think you can do, regardless of the medium you're doing it on, chat, email, SMS, make each reminder valuable. A lot of webinar emails that I read aren't that valuable. They're like, hey, your webinar is starting in 10 hours. That's it. And you're like, okay, that's cool. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of value there. Um, and I do think that there's so much more we can do with that, and the chatbot gives you the perfect medium to do that. Share a tip about the topic that the webinar is about. Share a teaser even about it. Even like a short video or GIF or audio or something. Anything that is creative that hypes people up about the upcoming event. Now, something you want to write down is that as of Wednesday, when the policies change, you can actually continue to message people outside of a 24-hour window from when they last talked to you using a message tag called Confirmed Event Update. So just write that down right now. As of today and March 4th, 2020, unless something dramatically changes right before then, this is something you'll be able to do because this was one of the biggest concerns that we heard from our clients was that 
now we're not going to be able to notify people about their upcoming webinars. So what's the point of opting people in and getting them to register through Messenger? And so this is how you'll be able to do that and reach out to them for free without having to figure out other um, ways to reach out to them for those pre-webinar reminders. All right. When to send reminders, test this for yourself. What has worked for us, and what I mean by worked is has the least number of unsubscribes and positive feedback per message where people are like, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. I am not annoyed with you. Whereas you can very quickly tell um, just by reading some of your back and forth bot and user messages if people are getting fed up because they will tell you, F you, and you guys suck. I already told you guys I'm not interested. You know, you'll, people will very quickly tell you off inside of a private message, right? No one's judging them. No one else can see that except them and you now. Um, and so you can very easily tell if someone's annoyed. That's the best feedback for you. It's immediate, and you can use that to improve your messages. So typically seven days, three days, one day before, and then three hours, 10 minutes. And 10 minutes has worked better for us than webinars starting right now because we want people there on time. And this gives people the opportunity. Maybe they're driving or they're doing something else. They're like, okay, hold on, I got to get ready. Um, obviously, can also have the opposite effect for procrastinators where they're like, oh, I got 10 more minutes, you know, and then they'll jump in 30 minutes later. But this we have found has actually improved our attendance rate. So for more advanced chat marketers, again, in the reminders now, you also have another opportunity as soon as someone talks back to the bot, if they haven't opted in for the one-time notification about the post-webinar gift that you want to give them, then ask them if they want it. If they don't want the gift for any reason, then you can actually ask them again if they want a one-time notification, but instead for the replay. Now, the thing with the one-time notification request is that you can have theoretically a unlimited amount of notifications per user active at any given time, but it has to be per topic. So I couldn't have like five notifications active for you, Jonathan, for example, um, all for the replay, right? It would have to be one for the replay, one for post-webinar gift, and maybe other things that you might promise along the way. Does that make sense? I know I haven't talked too much about the messenger policies yet, but if you guys have any questions about that stuff, you have a little bit of background info, feel free to ask um, during the q and I know we have about 15 more minutes, so I believe I'll be able to get through all of this. Step number four, our final step, is the post-webinar sales. The most important part, because this is where you're going to generate your ROI. So four to seven post-webinar sales messages has been the sweet spot for us, where, again, the sweet spot, what has worked for us, when I say these things, I'm talking about the least amount of negative feedback with people still really excited to get those messages um, and the least amount of unsubscribes as well. That also generates ROI in this case. Now, in each message, if someone says they're not interested in the offer, here are the three things that you need to do. One, stop messaging them about it immediately. Really important. With email and other channels that are a little bit more saturated, you have some more leniency. People might not see your emails or just be like, oh, everyone spams me on email. So they might not single you out. But with Messenger, because people are not getting saturated by hundreds of people messaging them, they're going to notice that you keep messaging them about the same thing they already told you they're not interested in. So it's very important to respect that and stop messaging them about it, which is easy to do with tracking inside of platforms like ManyChat. But you don't need to unsubscribe them from your entire bot list. You can just unsubscribe them from these messages, make that clear, obviously, and find out what they are interested in. This is a whole other strategy that I could have done another talk on, but you know, doing segmentation through quizzes and also evergreen engagement is really important for chat. And so that's something that you can now take people into is say, okay, let me ask you a few questions, find out what you're really interested in, and only send you relevant information about that. Also get their feedback if it makes sense at that point. Right? If they do say, I'm not interested in the offer, or I don't want the gift, um, then you could say, okay, why not? And if you don't want to share, no worries, just say skip. Um, give them a really easy way to not have to do that thing. But you'll get actually a pretty good amount of feedback right there um, when you ask for it. People want to share inside of a chat conversation. And then, of course, at the end, offer them something else if it's possible for you inside of the bot. Is this, if this is your first bot campaign, you may not have something else you could send them directly to in the bot, but maybe you could send them to a landing page or something else for another offer that's maybe somewhat similar since obviously they were interested in the webinar topic, but maybe the offer is too expensive for them, or maybe they don't want to buy your offer in the specific method that it's delivered, but they would rather, let's say you're selling an in-person event, they would rather buy an online course or something. Um, then you want to give them other options as well. After the webinar, here's four ways that you can message people. Someone who has talked to you in the last 24 hours, 
The one-time notification request is active for that user, so that's why doing this in as many ways as you can beforehand, not asking people who already opted in, but really utilizing platforms like ManyChat to your advantage, because you can definitely do conditions and logic there so that you're not annoying people who already told you yes or no. A sponsored message, which I haven't talked about yet, but this is what it looks like. It's literally just like a regular message, except it says sponsored at the top. So that's the only way you would know that. And it can have a limited number of characters, but it can also still have graphics, and you can pretty much include whatever text you want here. So this is a great option as well, in case you don't have those two there, but you do know that someone's interested in this, and obviously um, sending sponsored messages to every single person on your list every time is not the best strategy, but if it is something like a post webinar, then this is a great opportunity to know this lead is hot, maybe you even know they attended the webinar, so you do send those people a sponsor. And then of course you also have SMS. So that is the four pillars that we've just covered, webinar invite, registration, reminders, and sales. And the in-between here, which I didn't get a chance to talk about too much, is the webinar room and the replay. So the easiest way that you can implement this, like right now, if you guys all went back to your hotel rooms, which you probably won't tonight, but let's say tomorrow, once you're home, um, then you could implement a chat widget, which I talked about and showed you guys at the beginning, on the webinar room and the replay. And there's a lot of really complex things you could do there, um, depending on also how your webinar is set up and what you cover at each timestamp and whatnot. But the easiest thing would just be have it there available for questions, input some of the FAQ that you know you guys usually get about the webinar, whether it's tech issues about you know the content that's being covered and then ultimately the offer you have at the end or whatever the call to action is, then that will be a great starting point and another opt-in way for you. Because when you have people engaged there, now they're also inside of the 24-hour window and have gotten value from you, they're hot, and now you can message them post-webinar and share whatever it is, the replay, your offer, etc. Now with this system, to give you guys a few ideas, we've done this for um, some smaller businesses as well as some pretty big businesses that spend millions of dollars a month on Facebook ads. So to give you two examples, for one of our clients, Positive Parenting Solutions, we made them a million dollars in five months, actually over a million, I think it was 1.2, um, and we doubled the conversion rate for their online course from 6% with email to 12% with Messenger, which is a huge, significant jump. They've been in business for over 10 years, and they have only sold one product with one webinar. They update the webinar every few years. Um, so this was huge for them um, and really, really excited that we were able to put this together for them and also test with different niches, like they're strictly only parenting one product, one webinar. So very different from, for example, another one of our clients, Mind Valley. they have over 30 different webinar funnels, and they spend millions of dollars a month on Facebook ads, and we made them over $400,000 in five months as well with their webinar campaigns. And actually, this is a great point to just bring up, you know, the other offer situation, right? So with someone, if you're a company or you have clients that only have like one main product, but maybe they have a lead magnet or a freebie, that could be something you offer people when they say, I'm not interested in your offer or I'm not interested in the webinar, and then bring them back to your core offer, let's say a few weeks later or a few months later. Um, also depending on their feedback, right? There's so much you can do with the user data, which is one of the great things about conversational. And then for someone like Mind Valley, where maybe you've got a ton of different products, should be fairly easy for you to do a segmentation quiz and then recommend a product or recommend a freebie for something. So that is all I have for you guys right now. Thank you so much, guys. You're amazing. Thanks. That was awesome. Thanks so much.